time for 2024's round of self-destructing books and I am a little bit nervous about this one. <laughs> So if you guys are unfamiliar with the concept of self-destructing books, it is a video that I make every year where I pick 10 books that have been on my shelves for quite some time that I should have read at this point. Deep down, I potentially want to unhaul these books, but I really struggle with decision making and I'm a never say never kind of person. So I really struggle with unhauling books without at least trying them because even though it could have been years since I actually put these books on my TBR, there was something about them that spoke to me that potentially would still speak to me now if I would pick them up and give them a try. So what self-destructing books does is allows me to have a 12 month period where I have set 10 books aside and said if I do not read them by the, 12, the end of the 12 months then I am going to be unhauling them. This allows me to mentally come to terms with the fact that they are going to be leaving my library but also gives me ample opportunity to pick them up if I am truly interested in reading them. So every year I do try to have a little bit of a theme and the reason why this one is potentially a little bit more scary for me is because this year we are going to have 10 sequels in this video. So these are sequels to books that I have potentially rated like three or or a low four. I have wanted to maybe see if the series gets better in any later installments but because I didn't have the best experience with book one I have really struggled to prioritize doing so. So but we have a range of genres here as well. We have a range of demographics and a range of reasons why I potentially have not picked up the sequels in these series. So these are going to be in no other order than the order that they're stacked in next to me. And the first one that we have is King of Sword and Sky by C.L. Wilson. So this one is the third book in the Tyrone Soul series, which is a fantasy romance series that it's been a while. It's been like four years. So let me see if I can remember. It is following a guy who is a cat shifter fae and he is desperately trying to find his mate. And I think that he's pretty much sure that this isn't going to happen for him, but his his race are also dying. So he asks like this crystal ball thing to help him save his race. And this points him to a human woman called Elisetta Baristani. The way I can't remember the exact details of the plot, but I still remember her name is wild. So as well as the Fae in this world, we also have like witches or sorcerers. And I believe that there is a ancient war between the two species, the Elisetta and Rain who is the name of our male main character, get entangled up in. So I read the first two books in this series. This one's book three. And I actually started book three as well. As y'all can see, it has my bookmark in it. And I think that I put it down because I was participating in some kind of readathon or I needed to read a book club book or something like way back in 2020 or 2021. And I never picked it back up. And I was getting a little bit tired of the series because while I do enjoy it, it does have very like old fashioned gender stereotypes where well, our male main character in this is like the warrior and the protector and our female main character is a healer and she's like soft and gentle and feminine and it's just like maintaining those gender stereotypes is not typically what I like. I personally in a female main character like the female to be like the strong warrior leader type and so having such clear-cut gender roles in this is what was kind of putting me off the series even though overall I did really enjoy this and this was highly recommended to me back in 2020 when I was searching for some fantasy romance reads after like off the back of House of Earth and Blood and wanting to get more into fantasy romance as a genre. This is also I believe one of my Patreon picks as well so it may come out of the jar in the next 12 months and then I can read it but I also would like to get to this off my own back maybe continue with the series because I feel like I've just flipped through and like read a page and based on how I feel about like the bit that I read. I wouldn't be mad to go back to this series. It's just been so long. And I do also have the issue if I DNF a book, even if it's a soft DNF, the chances of me returning to that book and picking it back up are slim to none. It's it's just not something that I typically do. I also have The Night Country by Melissa Albert. This one is the second book in a YA duology, the first book being The Hazelwood. Now, I don't necessarily think that The Hazelwood needed a sequel and The Hazelwood is like a fever dream. It's a book that has a ton of random weird stuff in it that isn't necessarily explained, which is usually something that I hate. But in that instance, I kind of liked it, which made me want to try The Night Country, even though I, I, it really, I, I don't need to continue on like what I read in the Halo Wood was absolutely fine. I'm not even sure like what this sequel 
entails but the hazelwood is about a girl whose grandmother lives on an estate called the hazelwood and her mother has always warned her to stay away from it there is a book of fairy tales that her grandmother wrote that has like a bunch of fanatics because there were very few copies so a bunch of like really big extreme fans trying to get copies of this book of fairy tales and the circumstances of the story end up leading this girl to her grandmother's estate where she finds out the reason why her mother has been keeping her away from the estate for so long. So it is a book of three parts, like it seems quite contemporary going into it. It has a bunch of weird and wild stuff in the middle and then the resolution is... I like it but it's not my typical kind of read you know so this has been languishing on my shelves pretty much since the year that it was released which is 2021 20, 2020 and just waiting for me to get to it but with the hazelwood having such a finite ending it's not really motivating me to pick up the sequel next up we have the memory of souls by jen lyons if you all have been around for the last couple of years you will know that i read the first two books in this series which is ruin of kings and the name of all things all big chunky adult fantasies. The first book I really loved, it starts off, I can't, is he called? He's not called Killian, I don't think. But the main character is in a prison cell next to a monster and the monster asks the boy to tell her a story. So he eventually, after much cajoling, starts the telling her the story of his life but she doesn't like the place where he starts so he is telling the story of his life kind of leading up to how he ended up in this cell but he's starting in the middle and she then takes up the story from the beginning telling like his origin story the start of his life leading up to the point where he starts the story and i thought that it was a very interesting way of structuring a novel and i even though it was confusing even though it's not like super hard fantasy with like strict magic rules that i like it also has like a bunch of gods i think there's god kings there's dragons and all of these little spider webs of things that you're not sure how they connect so it was a little too loose for what i typically like but i really liked the unique narrative so while it was very confusing i was very excited for everything to kind of come together a little bit in the second book but what actually happens in the second book is that it is essentially the same as the first but following a different character including that really unusual way of telling the story and i just thought that was super redundant i wasn't as invested in the second book and the second character as i was with the first i really wanted after getting so into the first book i was really impatient for the story to continue instead of us going back in time to follow a different character to catch us up to this point and because of that i just never picked up book three i have been told by a couple of people who are really big fans of this series that this is going to be the deciding factor for me so if i like this book i should continue the series and if this one is not for me then I should give up. The problem is though is that this book is five in total and I read the first two just before book five was released. I think it's called Discord of the Gods but I also pre-ordered The House of Always which was book four in paperback. So I read the first two books, pre-ordered book four in paperback and ordered book three and then by the time I got to end of the end of book two I was like I don't even know if I want to continue this series but now I have books three and four so it would be really good if I can make my way through this. They are obviously very chunky. This one without the gloss is 751 pages. This kind of falls into the category of the Hazelwood where it didn't necessarily need a sequel in my opinion but I picked it up because I did like the first book and that one is The Boy on the Bridge by M.R. Carey. The first book is The Girl with All the Gifts. Now The Girl with All the Gifts could be a standalone. It is a zombie story and I don't want to give you a synopsis because I having read that book so long ago and obviously knowing the end I'm not sure what is and isn't a spoiler anymore but it has a different take on zombies than your typical zombie story I feel although it does follow the narrative of a zombie apocalypse where we're following survivors that have a school of zombie children and they're trying to I guess find the cure to the zombie virus but potentially find out some different things instead and I know that I'd heard a lot of amazing reviews for that book when I picked it up and I was a little bit disappointed based on that because I expected it to blow my mind and while I did enjoy it it didn't really have that effect on me so The Boy on the Bridge is a prequel story to The Girl with All the Gifts I don't know whether it is following like the beginning of the apocalypse or whether it's going within the same kind of vein as The Girl with All the Gifts which if you have read that and the end is the most intriguing part of it 
in my opinion. But because it's a prequel, The Girl With All The Gifts is essentially a standalone. I'm once again not feeling the most motivation to pick it up because I'm not curious because the first book is actually a standalone, you know? Speaking of zombies, we also have Deadline by Mira Grant. This is the second book in the Newsflash series, which I was very excited to start because I don't love the Wayward Children series. If you guys don't know, Mira Grant and Shauna Maguire are the same person. I know that as Mira Grant, she writes typically more gritty, stories and also some really like interesting sci-fi synopses. So this one is a once again a zombie apocalypse story and the thing that disappointed me about this is that it's actually not really about the zombies, it's more about hypothetical politics. So this one is following some bloggers who have essentially become the most credible journalists in the wake of the zombie apocalypse because all of the journalists were telling everybody to calm down, everything was going to be fine and the bloggers were the ones on the street saying like everybody is eating everybody and we're all going to die. We're following these bloggers that have been asked to follow a presidential campaign by this president who seems to be a little bit more modern than his predecessors and they are the first bloggers that have ever been asked to follow a presidential campaign. However, when they start to report on it, they find out that there is potentially a plot to kill this president and they want to uncover and get to the bottom of that. So I felt like this was more of a speculative, if we had a zombie apocalypse but society and civilization still went on. What would those politics look like? Like what would society look like? And it felt more of an exploration into that than it did a zombie apocalypse story which is what I was potentially interested in. But I did want to continue with the sequel to kind of see what direction it goes in and it actually had a very shocking end to book one but I will confess I was flicking through this book in Waterstones to figure out how many pages it had and I read like the last line and spoiled myself so there's that. One that I'm kind of sad about is Cytonic by Brandon Sanderson. I still have not finished Skyward Fly either, which is the novella collection that goes in between book two and three in this series. This one's book three, but this one is Brandon Sanderson's YA sci-fi series following a girl called Spencer, whose father is a deserter from this military. They live on a planet and the most prestigious thing you can be on this planet is a fighter pilot against the endless war between the humans on this planet and the alien race that is constantly attacking them. So her father was a fighter pilot and he deserted. However, Spencer knows her father and she doesn't really believe that's the truth and all she wants to do is follow in his footsteps. However, because of her father's reputation, everyone is pushing back against her constantly and because the fighter pilots are such a integral part of the society of this planet, her family and herself have been alienated since her father deserted because of his actions. In the first book, we are following her kind of pushing back against these authorities to achieve her dream and become a fighter to pilot while also unraveling the truth of like what actually happened with her father. I really loved book one. I think Spencer is a very unlikable main character that you grow to love throughout the course of the story and I also really became attached to the side characters. Now my issue is is that book two, like with the name of all things, no, the ruin of kings. It is just a repeat, like book two is a repeat of book one. It is the same situation with Spencer in a different location with a different cast of characters. And I also believe that Cytonic is the same as that as well. So I'm really sad because I loved book one. I gave it four stars. Book two, I didn't really enjoy. And I feel like book three is in the same vein. So I'm now, I've been dragging my feet on it for a long time. So I'm now putting this on here to kind of make me push through and see if I want to continue this series or not. On the fantasy romance or apocalyptic romance side of things, I have The Solace of Sharp Claws by Lana Pacherzik. So this one is a long series of various fey romances. The first four books are like a series of shifter romances and then I think the next four are vampires and the next four are elves. But this is, it's essentially a paranormal romance. Technically it isn't because it's in a, almost like a dystopian world, like it's set far in the future with an apocalyptic like background of our current world. But it reads like a paranormal romance with each book following a different woman and a different fae. So I didn't love it because of that. Y'all know I'm not a massive fan of paranormal romance, especially when it's quite episodic like this. But the thing that I did really enjoy about this is the unique setting because like I said, we are in a world 
that is an evolution of our world that feels historical, like it feels like Middle Ages fantasy, but is actually hundreds of years in the future and there is a reason for why. So in the wake of the destruction of the earth, the Fae have come to like kind of rule the land and this all seems to have been orchestrated by a particular group of people and our main characters are trying to get to the bottom of what exactly it is that went on. So it's actually the creation of this world that I find the most interesting, but the romantic element of it, I'm not a huge fan of. They are incredibly quick reads, so it won't take up too much of my time. I do honestly think this series isn't necessarily for me, but I am willing to give book two a try, especially because I already own it. Next up we have Blood and Honey by Shelby McCurin, which is the sequel to Serpent and Dove, which was a very hyped like YA fantasy romance back in the day. I read Serpent and Dove and I rated it five stars, but it was a very in the moment five star rating. And I actually think it was more of like a three, if I'm being honest. But we're following a witch and a witch hunter and after they they're, they're like playing a game of cat and mouse like he is desperately trying to catch her and they get caught in a compromising position where it looks compromising but really he has just been trying to capture this girl and he has no idea that she's a witch I think that she's a thief and that is his problem with her he's a witch hunter so he's like a member of the guard and because they're found in this compromising position they are forced to get married and they obviously like grow closer without him knowing that she's actually a witch and her reconciling her feelings with the fact that she she is a witch and this is somebody who hunts down her people and she is potentially growing close to him. So after I gained some distance from that and decided like, yeah, no, this is actually not a five star read for me. It has halted my progress with the series, but I do have Blood and Honey, obviously. And then my friend was on haul in the third book, which I don't remember the name of. So I also have that. I have the whole series. Also a very quick read and I would like to catch up with this one. It's just, I haven't really had any motivation to do so. And I think that like this video, especially what I'm trying to do here is push me into prioritizing these because thinking about it like if I DNF this I'm going to clear a massive amount of space on my shelf because I'm going to get rid of the whole trilogy. Same with this. Definitely the same with this because I have four of these bricks on my shelves so it's good because they're just sitting around taking up space and I'm saying like yeah one day I'll read the sequel or decide what I want to do potentially unhaul and one day is just never really rolling around if I'm being honest. So next up I have a little bit of a controversial one. Not controversial because it's in this video but the book itself is controversial and that is Ruthless Gods by Emily A. Duncan. So if you weren't around back in 2020 and on the hellscape that was Twitter into 2020 like it was a horrible place to be and I honestly do not go on Twitter anymore or X as it's now called because of the anxiety of book Twitter between the years of like 2020 and 2022. But Emily Duncan was um kind of outed as being a bully and was I don't remember the specifics at this point but she 100% was accused of bullying a whole host of authors including Hafsa Faisal and it was all proven to be true. Everyone that knew about it kind of came out and was like yeah she was the ringleader in this big bullying thing and because of that I don't want to support her. However at this point I already owned all of her books. I'd already already read Wicked Saints a couple of years ago. This thing happened like around the release of the last book in this trilogy. I didn't love Wicked Saints, but now that I, I don't want to unhaul them without trying book two. I also believe that people have flagged some questionable content within these books regarding anti-Semitism. I cannot confirm that for sure because this happened like after I'd read the first book and I don't know what the specific instances that they reported were. I do think that I was not invested enough in the first book to really actually continue with this series and like enjoy it. The main reason I'm putting this on this list is so that I don't get to it in the next 12 months and I feel like I can unhaul it having given it a chance. Like I had it on the self-destructive books for 12 months, didn't read it so I could unhaul it guilt-free. And then the final one in this video is the second book in a duology which is always the worst because like if I read this it would just be done. But that is Misrule by Heather Walter. So this one is the sequel to a Sleeping Beauty retelling. It's a sapphic Sleeping Beauty retelling where essentially Sleeping Beauty and Maleficent fall in love. It's a little bit different than that. It's set in a world where there are graces, which are essentially the fairies. And what is she called? Alice? Yeah, Alice is a dark grace and people come to her for curses. Like the other graces, people go to them for like beauty, health. They come to Alice for curses. And this is something that has been kind of forced upon her. She never wanted to be this person that gives out curses and she is alienated because of it, which obviously causes a lot of resentful feelings between her and everybody else. One day she's invited to Sleeping Beauty, Aurora, is she called? Yeah, she's called Aurora in this. Aurora's birthday party where she meets Princess Aurora and 
and they start to grow closer. It is kind of like a villain origin story as well where they have people have treated her as a villain so she becomes a villain and it wasn't my favorite thing ever but I did enjoy it. I do like a fairy tale retelling so I do want to read the sequel and wrap up this story because this wasn't as dark as I expected it to be based on it being like a villain origin story but based on where the end like the first book ended I feel like it has potential to go into that direction which is what I'm intrigued to find out so hopefully I'll get to this one as well so those were my 10 self-destructing books for 2024 let me know down in the comments which of these books you would most like me to prioritize like I said the main reason for most of these being on here is that I just need some sort of motivation to actually continue this series sometime soon and decide whether I want to continue or dnf them but thank you so much for tuning into this video please don't forget to like if you liked it and subscribe if you want to if you head to my description box you'll find a link to my goodreads instagram and twitter if you'd like to follow me on any of those as well as a link to my bookish candle website the etsy flat and a 10 percent off discount code but that's it from me today guys bye oh you bite your friend like chocolate you say you will go where nobody knows with guns in under our petticoats we're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no